I don't need no friends. I don't need no friends. So that's what everybody's saying that they don't need friends on these YouTube thing. And so are these people right? Do we not need friends? Are friends nothing but drama, right? So I will say I agree on both part of the spectrum. Right? I agree that sometimes friends could be drama if you are choosing the wrong friends, right? And guess what? Then they're not friends. True friends are people who are there for you, people who are like-minded, people who respect you, people who care for you, people who want to be around you, right? These are people who you want to call friends, people who are sitting there and looking and hating you or judging you or always criticizing you. Those people are not friends. So these videos, when people talk about fake friends, that's what they are. These are the fake friends. But when you have real friends, y'all, when you have true friends, these people move past friends and become family. These are the people that I like to call chosen family. Because guess what? Sometimes um, we're in messed up family. Sometimes blood is thinner than water. You know what I mean? You have a really toxic family members. They call themselves family, but all they do is abuse you. They use you. They insult you. And these are not real family. What's family is those friends that I'm saying that when these friends become family, these are people who are going to be there for you. These are people that when you're sick and you're not picking up the phone, they're just going to come to your door to say, are you okay? You know what I mean? These are people that when you're crying, they have given you that shoulder to, to, to cry on. And when you're happy, they're right there enjoying with you. I like the, the quote when they talk about like a real friend is the one that's sitting in jail with you and not the one that's picking you up. Listen, <laughs> Sometimes it is that way, but hopefully you have a friend that's also picking you up from jail too, because uh, you want to have different types of friends. But anyway, um, I'm saying that to say that it's good to have friends. We all need friends, but we have to be very careful in regards to who we call a friend, right? Just because you work with someone, that's another thing I want to talk about coworkers. Because you work with them does not make you them your friend. It makes them your co-worker. It makes them your associate. You don't have to be friends with your co-workers. You have to respect them in the sense that you're in a workplace, right? If they're not people who who um, has earned your respect, you don't want to be disrespectful because that becomes on you, right? But you keep your distance as much as you can and you keep it professional. These are coworkers. These are people who are not your friends. So a lot of times people get that mixed up and they think that, oh, I work with them, that they're my friends. Mm -mm. You work with them so they're your coworkers. As I said, friends are people who are there for you, people who are like-minded, people who you want to be around, people who treat you with respect and people who you treat with respect as well. All of these wonderful things in life that happens, it is amazing to have friends to be able to celebrate those things with. Even birthdays, right? When you have a birthday, if you want to have a birthday party, it can't be a birthday party, party on one. You know, you need to be able to have friends. And for the purpose of this um, conversation, I'm going to try to refrain from family. I'm not going to talk about family because we're focusing on friends, okay? So, again, you need friends to be able to. You can't have a party and have nobody come in there because it ain't a party. Um, again, you're getting engaged. You want to be able to look at your friend and say, oh, my God, do you remember that when we were single, all of these things that we did together, and now I'm getting married. Like, you need someone who's been there through those relationships with you, right? You've been you need someone who's been there through the hard times, and so that when you have the good times, that way you guys can celebrate it. So going back on the hard time, like I said, there's a lot of people who claim to be your friends, and they're all there for the parties. They're there to celebrate, but when things get hard, they're not there to find. But true friends are there. So this is why we need friends. So imagine that you just had a breakup, you know, and you really need the emotional support right now. And yes, you can go to a therapist, you can talk to a therapist, but a therapist, they are great in terms of like, I like to call myself like a living diary, right? Living diary. I won't judge you. And as a therapist, because I believe in non-judgmental environment and I believe in teaching you skills to help you better yourself. But friends are not there to give you uh teaching you skills to help you better yourself. They're not there to be professional. They're there to be with you where they're at. They're there to say, you know what? He wasn't a good person or... 
but yet they're there to pick you up through it all, right? So these are reasons why we need friends. Um, so when we are going to that hard breakup, that we have someone to hug us, right? We have someone to, 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 to lay in bed with us and say, it's okay. We have someone to give us, you know, some hot chocolate, or we have someone to give us that shot of tequila. All of those things, your therapist can't do that, right? Because these are boundaries that your therapist can't cross, but your friends can do that, right? They can be there. They can talk to you through it all. They can be there and say, hey, let's go and do something wild and crazy just to forget about him. You know, let's go do this. So you need friends to be able to do that. If you have, you know, a family member that died, your friends are there to not only hear you, but they're there to actually help you plan the, the funeral it needs to be. They're there to go to the funeral there with you. They're there to help you. So all of these things that, again, families are there for as well, but we're not talking about family, we're talking about friends. So that emotional support is something very, very important that we need friends for. And for those people who don't have friends, I am very sorry that you are missing that part because it is a huge part. It is horrible inside and can lead to depression when you are going through these things by yourself and you don't have the person to turn over and say, hey, can I have a hug? Hey, what do you think about this? Hey, will it get better? You know, and again, we can always go to a therapist and the therapist will help you within the professional boundaries of, that they can, but a friend is there to be your confidant also. So it's very, very important. And like I said, they're there to hear you, but they're also there to party with you and to get that shot all day long if that's what you need. Stay till the end of this video because what I will do is that I'm, as a therapist, I work with, you know, adolescents and adults who are lonely, who don't have friends, who go through depression. And I work with them and I teach them how to make friends. In fact, um, I might do a separate video on how adults can make friends because at the end of the day it's easier for kids to make friends but as an adult it's super hard to make friends but i will give you guys the steps on how to make friends as an adult so going back um so yeah so if you choose not to have friends that's fine that's your choice but when it's not your choice that's when depression and all of those things start to happen. So again, so these people that do the videos and I say that they don't have no friends, I feel for you, I really do. Because I live in a world where the media tells us we need to be around a lot of people, we need to be going to parties, we need to be socializing, we need to do all of those things. So that's what the media tells us. But as human nature, human nature tells us that we are not supposed to be alone, we're not supposed to be in solitude. Matter of fact, if you guys really think about it, those people who are in prison, when they act up, what do the prison guards do, right? They put them in solitude confinement, right? They put them in a small room where there's no light, there's no talking to anyone, there's no communication, and they're completely by themselves. And what happens is that they get into their head, depression starts happening, and supposedly it's it's due in order to tr teach them something, right? Right? In order to discipline them. So the whole thing is that we don't live in a world where we are meant to be by ourselves. Um, I remember when I was in college, like I've always been lucky enough to have a lot of friends. Um, and sometimes you don't want to be around all these friends. And I just thought to myself, I said, you know what, Joanne, you have a lot of friends. You're always with your friends. Like, how does it feel to be by yourself? And you know what I did? I took myself on a date. Like I was like, you know, I love scary movies and not all my friends like scary movies. And I said, I'm going to take myself on a date. I'm scary movies to see what happened. Let me tell you guys my experience. Okay. So I went, I got dressed up and I went to the movies. Matter of fact, I think it was one of the Halloween movies. I sat down and I was watching it and I was really excited. I turned over to my right to be like, hey, oh my God. And guess what? There was no one there for me to say, hey, oh my God, too, right? And it was like, it wasn't that fun watching the movie. Granted, when you go to movies in the theaters, you're not supposed to be talking to people, but it feels nice to have someone over there to see your excitement, to see, you know, to, to see their expression, to see their excitement. If you want to say something that they're there for you to be able to say it to. So anyway, so it felt weird, but I was like, okay, whatever, keep it moving. So after the movies, I was like, you know what, I'm going to go out to eat by myself, which I have never done. So I said, I'm going to go to a bar. I went to the bar and I sat down, ordered my drink. It felt so awkward y'all i'm sitting now and i felt like like i was in a different world because it was like i didn't have anyone to talk to so i was like okay what joanne you're doing this experiment keep them going so i you know i ordered my drink and i ordered my food and i just did not feel right and part of it like i said is because i have so much friends and i've never 
been by myself before um long story short within like five minutes of me there someone came and talked to me and then we just started you know the conversation and, and that was that but i am a person that is super super easy to make friends and i can understand that a lot of people it's not easy to make friends so again as i said it it's one thing when it's your choice to go and do that but it's another thing for if i had went to the restaurant by, by myself and i was like hoping that someone comes and talk to me that would be a whole different thing right so again for people who are out there who truly want to have friends and who find that they don't have friends it's really heartbreaking. It really is heartbreaking. And it is something that definitely causes a lot of depression. Now, for people who are like, you know, I don't need no friends. I don't need no friends. Re going back to addressing them. You do need friends. You do need friends. You don't need to have an entourage. You don't need to have a whole lot of people. But you do need that person. You need that person to be able to talk to. You need that person to be able to feel, right? Like, um think about during COVID time when we were isolated in our own homes. So if you had a family, you were probably going crazy because the kids are running around, they're not in school, and you still have to work from home and things were absolutely crazy, right? But if you don't have a family and you were by yourself, can you imagine these people who were spending months by themselves and they had no one to touch, no one to hug, no one to look face to face? Like, that's a lot. So during that time, mental health became a huge issue. Depression skyrocketed because people were in essence, they were in isolation. They were by themselves. They were alone. You know, you can talk to your family over the phone. You may talk to friends over the phone, but this, uh, we're talking about people who don't have friends. So you didn't even have friends to talk to over the phone, right? You're talking to your family, but you had no friends to talk to over the phone. So there's someone that looked like they're coming towards my car. So I'm not, I'm not feeling this. It's so weird doing this talking on, uh, in my car. But anyway, I'm doing this because when I come from this appointment, I don't know if I'm going to be able to talk properly. And so that's why I'm trying to get it done, get it done. So back on to it. Yeah. So not having friends, it's, it's, it's not a good idea. So you have a lot of people who are out there and they say, you know, I don't have any friends. I don't need to have any friends. All I have is my, you know, I have my husband, I have my wife, and that's all the friends that I need. Let me tell you guys something right now. You need to stop because your spouse is wonderful and they love you and they're being there for you. But let me tell you, it is a lot of pressure on them, okay? To be with someone who has no friends and you're the only friends, all of that burden falls on you. Guess what? Because if you are one who has friends, so let, let me give a scenario. So let's just say I'm married to my husband and I have friends. You know, I have two or three friends. I don't have that much friends, but I have two or three friends, very close friends that I trust and that um, I communicate with. My husband has no friends. Now, number one, my husband, because he has no friends, he's going to want to be on my back all the time, right? Anytime I want to go out and talk to my girlfriends, I want to do something, he going to be like, oh, you're talking to them again? Oh, where you're going? All of those things, he may not realize it, but because he doesn't have friends of his own to go out with and to do things with, he'll look at my relationship with my friends and he'll look at it as in they're taking too much of her time right? And then he'll look at it as an, oh, you're always talking to your friend. So I say that little snip thing to say that some of us may say that we don't need any friends because we have our spouse. And as wonderful as it is that we have our friend, our spouse, we are putting a lot of pressure on them without realizing that we're doing that, right? Some of us may say that we don't need any friends, right? We have our spouse, it's just my spouse. I don't need any friends. I don't need all these outside things. And while it is wonderful that you have a very supportive spouse that's there for you, that's not healthy. It's not healthy to only be with you and your spouse and not have friends. In the same token, it's not healthy to have friends come in your marriage, right? Because that's something that could mess up your marriage. But what I'm saying is that while you and your partner are together, husband and wife, you are one, you need to be 
an individual as well. You need to be able to have things outside of a marriage. You need to be able to have friends. You need to be able to have that girlfriend. Or if you're a guy, you need to be able to have that guy friend. Just to bounce ideas off. You know what I mean? And, you know, hey, what do you think about this? Hey, what do you think about that? And also, hey, let's go, you know, bowling. Oh, let's go. Let's go. Let, let's go watch a, a movie. Let's go have girls night to just talk about things. Hey, let's just go have guys night to just talk about things. Just get away from the kids for a second. Just get away from my, from my house for a second. You need to be able to have those things because all of that will in turn help your relationship, right? Because you're going to become a whole rounded individual. You're not going to only be on that spouse, but you're also going to be able to be independent and to be in yourself. So um, so for those people who say that, you know, I just have my spouse, I don't need no friends, really think about that and step back and say, am I putting too much pressure on my spouse because I don't have any friends? And then on the other hand is that when your spouse sees that you don't have any friends, that's a lot of pressure that they're putting on themselves because they got to almost, I'm not saying they're walking on eggshell, but they got to really be careful of what they do because let's say you had your friends and you would go out with your friends it would be nothing but because you don't have friends the understanding is not there the understanding is not clear yes it's nice to be able to go to dinner all the time with your family to be able to go to dinner with your husband absolutely beautiful but sometimes it's good to have some girls night out sometimes it's good to have night out with the boys it's just a different vibe and as human nature we need some of those things so for those people who say that you don't need friends i don't agree with that and i mean it could be my opinion it, which it is my opinion but i i see it over and over i see what having no friends do to people and it's not something great so you stayed that off that long so i said that i'm going to give you guys tips on how to make friends as an adult. So tip number one. Click over here, friendship in 15 minutes, how to make friends as an adult.